Okay, so good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Um, this is the V Success um, interview, the second week. We are here with uh, Maya and with uh, George Monastiriaco from the law faculty at the University of Ottawa, a very notable Vanyi uh, alumni. So uh, I'll present myself. I'm a Law and Society student, currently in Honor Social Science on the Dean's List and on the Vanyi Society. And this initiative is part of the Vanyi Student Leaders. And I'll let uh, Maya present herself. Yep, so I'm with Mario and the Vanier Student Leaders. I'm currently a second year psychology student at Vanier and I am interested in visual arts and technology. Okay, so George, could you please tell us a bit about yourself? So I'm George Monasteriaco, Monasteriacos. Um, I'm a student at the University of Ottawa I'm a problem solver, I'm persistent, I'm even relentless, I'd say. Um, I'm very interested in politics, in history, in society, in understanding how things work and how to improve them, in, uh, like I said, solving problems. I also make music, I love traveling, I manage my own investment portfolio as well. And uh, I just, I, I want, I, I'm very determined to have a positive impact on my friends, my family, uh, my community, and society at large. So, I mean, however I can accomplish that, um, I do my best. Okay, thank you for that. We all admire your, your service to your community. So, um, you went to Vanier College uh, eight, eight, ten years ago. Uh, what are your most important memories or your, your the most significant moments uh, when you were a student at Vanier? So, hmm, it's a good question. I think the standout moment, the first standout moment was when I was accepted to Vanier College. So, I had been rejected eight times between 2010 and 11. So, um, I did one semester of night school as a result of that uh, in 2011, so just about 10 years ago, January 2011, uh, I was rejected three times, then I reapplied again, rejected three times, then rejected twice, and I was finally accepted in, I think it was November 2011, uh, I had taken seven courses by then, I think I had a cumulative average of like 92 or something. And uh, I'd finally been accepted. And I was just, that was a really good moment for me. The second memorable moment would probably be um, having my, my music. I'm a musician as well. And having my music play at Jake Small. Uh, I don't know if it's still called Jake Small now. Or performing or rapping during Universal Break as well. That was really cool. I mean, it, it was just, I had fun. I had fun. And then third, obviously, would be my experiences um, Probably through uh, the Vanier College Mob Squad, which was, I don't want to call it a political organization, but it was my first involvement in politics, in grassroots politics, at uh, during the student movement of 2012, Le, Le Printemps Arabe, as we like to call it now. And that was, I learned a lot through that. A lot through that. Um, and I guess, yeah, that, that those would be the three main, uh, the three main, memories that I have from Vanier College. Okay, so after having studied at three uh, foreign universities, after having uh, studied at McGill, um, you joined the uh, Faculty of Law at the University of Ottawa. So I know that a lot of students at Vanier are thinking of the University of Ottawa at, at the Photo Law Faculty. Is there anything you would like to tell those students about uh, the University of Ottawa? Look, I'm the president of the Faculty of Law. Of, of the section of the droit civil, just that will tell you that I'm super dedicated to the community. I love the community. I love that faculty. Um, they've done great things for me. They've done great things for a lot of my friends and colleagues. Um, it's not what you would expect. So even before I went to law school, I thought, okay, it was a very quote unquote cutthroat environment, very competitive which it is, essentially, but I mean, I've been helped so much in law school. I've done my best to, to help as well. So if somebody gave me one, I tried to give them two. 
if people gave me five, I tried to give them 10, right? I mean, uh, we share, all our notes are shared, our documents are shared. If you had the privilege of studying at the library, I know this year, first years haven't had that opportunity because school's been closed, but the students who studied at Brian Dixon or at 600 King Edward, um, they had, we, we, we built a really nice culture. And I think that's something that's very, I guess it's unknown to students who are applying to the program and even students who enter the program, they're very surprised by how much we help each other and how far we're willing to go for each other. And I think that, that sense of community, it's a beautiful thing. And if you're debating on going to Ottawa, I understand the cost is, is significantly higher than UDM or UCAM or uh, even Sherbrooke. Uh, but um, I'd sell you all day on Ottawa. And keep, be advised, Ottawa is not my first choice, right? I, I had actually been uh, rejected from UDM. I had been conditionally accepted. And then they rejected me because I didn't uh, do well on the, the French placement exam. And I had to resort to Ottawa. I had no choice, right? And, uh, and I'm grateful that that happened, actually. I'm very grateful. So I'll leave you with that. Okay. Why is law a subject that interests you? So I, I haven't wanted to be a lawyer since I was a kid. I actually wanted, I, I decided I was going to be a lawyer uh, just after my 18th birthday. So after, after high school, I didn't get accepted to Vanier College. That was the only college I ever applied to that I ever wanted to go to. I ended up working at Toys R Us, the graveyard shift, for, for three and a half, four months, from September to December 2000 and. 10 and um, I uh, I basically decided like look I want to have a positive or I want to have an impact on society I want to have my impact on society and I thought becoming a lawyer was the best way of achieving this impact today 10 years later having experienced what I've experienced um, I realized that what I really wanted was to be influential um, powerful, even rich and successful. And I saw the law as a means of obtaining that. But today I've realized, you know what, I could probably obtain that uh, more efficiently through different means, right? So it's a very interesting exercise, but uh, the law is definitely very interesting. It's very rigorous. It's very important. It's one of the, the, the building blocks of our society. Right? I mean, law, culture, and and money, right? So you're someone that's volunteered for Make-A-Wish, for, I believe, Amnesty International, for a lot of different uh, uh, great programs. What, what do you think, out of your experiences, which one do you think was the most helpful in terms of uh, a future lawyer, a future jurist, someone, a law student, someone interested in the law? I think... How could I say this? All the experiences that you have throughout the course of your life will contribute to who you become and they follow you everywhere. So if you want to go to Droit Civil, I can tell you that the faculties, 99% of what they're looking at is your grades. But the moment you leave the faculty, it's the things that you did outside of school that are, or not necessarily outside of school, but outside of the academic context that are really going to differentiate you from the next person that are going to allow you to provide your different flavor to, to the melting pot. Right. So, um, I, I love helping. I want to help. I want to help you guys. <laughs> like I want to help as many people as I can. So, uh, that's why I volunteer. It's something that I would, that I just, I got to do, right? So if I have the chance to perform in front of 300 people for Make-A-Wish and I could raise money in the process, I did it, right? If I could help out uh, raise awareness about X issue in this country or even in our country through Amnesty International, I would do that as well. If I could raise money for Run for Women, I'll do that. If I could raise money for Breast Cancer Society of Canada, I'll do that as well. If I could help the homeless in Montreal, I'll do that as well. I mean... These experiences all contribute to who you are. And it's only after you leave school that you really see who's done something other than school, right? So once you're in school, you think that's all that matters. This is the beginning and the end. But outside of that, 
world outside of that realm, you start to see, okay, has this person worked on a team? Probably not. I could tell. I could tell you've never worked as, a, as, as part of a team. Not you, right? Just generally. Earlier, you disclosed that you studied abroad from everywhere to, from Chile to Australia. And I just wanted to know, and I think we would all love to know, how you have personally found that traveling has helped you to gain a better understanding of yourself. So that's an excellent question. Um, traveling is something that I recommend to everybody, especially to young people. Um, and I'm not talking about just going on vacation to taking a week to go to Cuba with your friends on an all-inclusive resort. I'm talking about really traveling, booking a one-way ticket, and just going, going with the flow, putting yourself in, in that, taking yourself out of your nest and outside of your comfort zone and going to a country where you don't speak the language, where you don't look like the people, uh, where they do things totally differently, right? I mean, there is so, there, there, there's so much that you can learn about yourself and about the world by putting yourself in that situation and getting yourself out of that situation. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's a rewarding experience. At least for me, it's been a very rewarding experience to be able to to really push myself to the limit because when you're out, when you're here at home, I know, okay, I have 300 friends that I could call at any time to come help me. I have my family, right? We, we all live on the same two streets, <laughs> right? Uh, but when you're in France or if you're in, in Israel or I went, I, I went to Israel and to Palestine or when I went to, to Indonesia, I don't know anyone here. I gotta make, I gotta find a way out of here, right? I gotta find a way to enjoy it and to experience it and to, to to understand it. And coming out of that experience, you really develop a different sense of self awareness, a different sense of cultural awareness, and you start to see the world through a different lens. And I think that's a lens, especially for people who want to who are let's say high achievers or who want to be in a leadership position in society. It's a very formative experience. So for example, I could tell you there are so many problems in Quebec and in Canada that could be remedied if we copied formulas from abroad. Right. And I mean, someone who hasn't been abroad can't, can't give you that solution because they've never been there. They've never seen it. They've never seen a different way of, of doing things. And I think that's a, a beautiful experience for everybody. That's really, really great that you were able to foster a sense of independent self-awareness by really getting out of your comfort zone. I think it's extremely inspirational. And uh, you also mentioned that you were a musician and that you've performed for charities and also are, were very successful and continue to perform music, right? So we also want to know how your artistic ventures have helped you in your journey. Do you find that they've really added a different perspective in terms of your life goals or the achievements or the people that you've met along the way? I think yes, but mainly what it's done, it helps you really develop conviction in your own self, your own beliefs. It helps you get rid of, um, the fear of what other people are going to think or say. I mean, that's always going to be present to a certain extent, but it helps you develop the confidence to rise above it and to say, I don't really care. <laughs> right. And that's important. Um, it helped me overcome stage fright, for example. Um, it develops your public, your, your public speaking skills as well, your creativity. And again, it's just another, ingredient that you could add into the melting pot for me at least um it's a kind of creativity that i could bring into every situation so for example at school and it's funny because you guys are the v the v success initiative at school um one of the slogans that i've created and even trademarked is success is imminent okay everyone at school uses that that slogan now but if i wasn't a rapper, so to speak, a musician who had that extroverted personality and that fearlessness, 
to not be judged and what people would say. Sometimes people would say, oh, but you're not being proper because you're telling everyone success and success and success. That's not how you speak to a professor. But at the end of the day, success is imminent. And everyone is saying it now. Even the dean is, is, is saying it, is using it, right? So, I mean, for me, if I hadn't done music and I hadn't gotten out of that comfort zone, that little bubble, I mean, I would never have done that. And so, yeah, definitely, you when you translate these experiences into all the other realms of your life. And uh, I think there's a net positive for yourself and for everyone around you. Okay, that's really great. I um, hope that answers your question. It does, <laughs> honestly, it does. Um, having a creative outlet to give you out of the box thinking, I've, I've seen firsthand and I've heard firsthand that it's really useful in um, team environments where you really need to work with other people. It helps to foster a sense of, as you said, um, extroversion, but also a sense of um, conviction in what your ideas can provide and what they hold. So I think that beautifully said, answered the question. And um, lastly, as we are parting, is there any advice, life advice, academic advice that you really want to give current or prospective Vanny students or our viewers in general? So, hmm, that's a good question. I think th it's important to take a long-term view of things. I think that my generation, but even your generation, you know, even more so, has we've developed this this culture of instant gratification okay um and what i mean by that is that students develop bad habits or people develop bad habits and we've become not only just sheltered and entitled but we've forgotten about how to to plan for the future so um and i like think of this Today, if you can go on your phone and you can order whatever you want, right? Whatever you want, you just order it. And if you don't have the money, somebody will lend you the money. So you can order it, right? If when I was younger and I was watching TV, I would have to wake up on Saturday morning and I'd have to watch the show and sit through the commercials. Today, you just go on Netflix, you stream what you want, you rewind it, you fast forward it uh, as you please. Um, if I wanted to have a conversation in school, we would have to speak face to face. Eventually, we developed MSN Messenger. Today, I can post a, a, a status on Facebook. And if I have a disagreement with somebody, I could just delete their comment or I could just block them. <laughs> right. So we live in this world now where everything is 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 catered to to just short term goals and, and gratification. And you need short term goals. Absolutely. But. The fact that we're, we're developing these habits where we don't foster long-term thinking and we're always resorting to instant gratification, I think that's going to have a lot of issues for my generation, your generation, and our society as a whole for years to come. So what I would say, think long-term, always think long-term, never compromise your values, and uh, never give up. These are the, the these are my the rules that I live by. <laughs> so that that's what I would say. That's great advice, honestly, really, really good. And um, yeah, it was great meeting you. Everything that you had to say was extremely inspirational, especially on uh, self development, character development, and pushing yourself to really learn more about other people, other worldviews, and culturally being more explorative you know i think it's been really great and also great to see what really interests you about law and how you came to be the person you are today not only in character but also where you are academically thank you for having me i appreciate it and uh stay disciplined keep thinking long term keep thinking big never give up and don't ever let anyone ever tell you that you're not good enough nobody your mom your dad your friends uh the admissions committee at a school your employer do not ever let anyone tell you that you are not good enough you are 
you always have been. And you will overcome so long as you don't give up. And with that, thank you. If I could also just conclude, I, I think that your story is very inspirational and that many people are actually going to learn um, a lot. And uh, if I could just coin your phrase, success is imminent uh, as long as you persevere. So thank you for giving us the, this interview and for our viewers. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next Tuesday.